Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can interpret data that you might be collecting in any lab. And so the very first thing that you'll notice that I have actually for my data set here is, uh, well, first of all, this has nothing to do with any of your labs, but I have students, I have a pretest, and I have a post-test percentage that they got on their exams. Okay, so this would be like at the beginning of a unit, at the end of a unit. Now the numbers don't matter because for your lab, you're gonna have different trials, different tests, different kind of anything. Uh, but I wanted to show you how you can use Google Sheets to do a lot of the work for you so that you don't have to actually, you know, kind of get out a calculator and do a whole bunch of rigorous calculations while you're actually doing your lab or analysis. So the first thing that I wanted to let you guys see is let's say I wanted to find the average of any or all of these numbers. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to find the average of your first three trials of something. In this case, just pretend like we have 20 trials of something. So how would I go about doing that? Well, if you click in the cell, I have average here just because I wanted to let you know exactly what we're going to be calculating. But what are you going to type in? If you type an equal sign into Google Sheets, it will immediately think that it's going to be calculating a formula. Okay, and so what we're going to type is average. And you can see that it gives me a whole list of possible um, things I could use, but I'm just going to click on average. And then it says select your values. Okay, so um, each one of these little cells has a coordinate. And so this is column B. And then each one of these numbers is exactly what um, you'd think. It's, you know, row two, three, four, etc. So what I want is I want the average of B2. And so it'll show you when you type in B2, it's saying, okay, you mean this. And I want to calculate it all the way down to B21. Okay. And so how would I say I want all of these selected? Uh, if you put a colon, um, it'll think that you're going to select a range of cells. And so I'm going to do B21. And then I end my parenthesis, and it's saying I'm going to find the average of every single one of these cells. And then I click Enter. And so the average is 74. So the average on this test was a 74. Let's say you wanted to find the median score of all of these things. You do the exact same thing again. So I'm going to hit Equals. And this time I'm going to type in Median. Select that, and it wants me to do again a range. So my range is going to be B2, B21, and my parenthesis equals. And so the median score was 82.5. All right, and then let's say I wanted to find the mode. So I'd type equals mode. And then again, I want to find, you know, for my entire set of data, 21, and my parenthesis mode was 85. That was the most common score. Okay. And so these are things that you can just kind of um, use if you had to for an analysis of data. So, you know, if you find the average amount of something for a trial, that could be a useful number that you might want to include in your analysis, median, okay, or mode. Now, these last ones here are a little bit different. Let's say I wanted to talk about how close my numbers are to each other. So something that we're not really going to get to talk about very much in class is something called standard deviation. Okay. And that tells me how reliable my data actually is. The smaller the number, the more reliable the data. The larger the number, the less reliable the data. Okay. And so if you're wondering what is a big or a small standard deviation, it depends what kind of numbers we're looking at. So here we're looking at percentages. So of course there's going to be kind of a larger range because some people score good on a test, other people score bad on a test. But if you're doing repeatable experiments, um, it could change. So you could have very small standard deviations. So the nice thing is, again, just like any formula, I type equals and then STDEV, standard dev. And then again, you just select all of your data. So in this case, B2 to B21 and your parenthesis equals. So the standard deviation is about 21. So that means that if we're looking at my average here of 74, then going up or down, um, the, the range there is about 21 up or 21 down from 74. Okay. And so this kind of looks weird though, by the way, in case you ever want, wanted to know, you can get rid of or add decimals by just clicking up here. And so I'm going to just say, you know, I want only a couple of decimals. 
Another interesting thing is if you want to know which of these numbers is the largest, I mean, if you have a lot of data, that could be something. And so again, you click equals. And if you want to know the smallest, it's min. And then again, I'm going to select all of my data. The lowest score of the, on the test was a 35. And if you wanted to know the highest, it would be max. Okay. And then again, B2 to B21, highest was 100%. And I can do the exact same thing here. So again, if I wanted to know on your, you know, at the end of the unit, what people were scoring, I could do the exact same thing again. And that would give me something I can compare. So let's do another one here for post-test. We'll do equals just to show you again. So I've got average. And this time it's C2 because I'm looking at this column. So C2 all the way to C21. There you go. So scored better. If I wanted to do the median, I type in median, okay, and again, it's C2 to C21, okay, so 85, that's a better score. Mode, let's try that, and so if I want to do mode, I put equals mode, and then that would be, again, C2 to C21, so a lot better, oops, and then standard deviation, so let's, let's take a look at this, so again, it's ST and then dev, and then again, I'm going to do C2 to C21. So notice that the standard deviation this time is a lot smaller, which means that the scores are a lot closer to each other than they were here. So there's not as big of a range in that situation. All right, and then lowest score, again, it would be min. And then I want to select all of my stuff. So the lowest score was a 50. And then again, not surprisingly, for max, the lowest score is 100. Okay, and why all of this is useful, you might think this seems a little strange that we might need to do this, but if you change any of this data, it will change automatically all of these numbers. So let's say that now instead of 55, it was 30. The average changed, um, standard deviation changed, etc. The lowest score, I think, also changed. Okay. And so again, if you change any of these numbers, it will dynamically change your values. And so again, that's why this is very useful. Each one of these could be a useful piece of information to use in an analysis of a lab. So I hope that you found that useful.